Hello and welcome back to my channel. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. My name is Muriel. And this evening, I'll be doing a mini review for um, Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov. Why did I choose to read Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov? Now, it is true that one of my favorite novels of all time was written by him, Lolita, and I did thoroughly enjoy his or one of his other novels. Ada or Arda, which is one of his last. I actually also technically read the original of Laura, which is um, a uh, draft of a novel he couldn't complete before he died, but I, I didn't like that at all. This I picked up because it's mentioned in My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, which I read this year. In that novel, Lolita's mentioned, of course, but Pale Fire is also mentioned because there's a line in there that says My Dark Vanessa, and My Dark Vanessa is the title of that novel, and it's what the main character is called by uh, her teacher with whom she has a relationship. And he gives her this novel as well because there's a poem in there with a couplet that says something very romantic about My Dark Vanessa. Anyway, so that's basically why I decided to pick up because it was mentioned in the book My Dark Vanessa and I had, of course, adored Lolita and I had thoroughly enjoyed Ada or Arda. I was like, well, this will be the next Nabokov I try. So, um, <laughs> this is an example of what is called metafiction. It's what I tended to call experimental fiction before I really knew what metafiction was. So, like Dead Astronauts, which I read this year also, a couple of months back, would be an example of metafiction, I think maybe in the genre of science fiction. In that case, here it's literary metafiction. Pragmatically, what this entails for Pale Fire is that, so you have an introduction, a poem and four cantos, and a commentary followed by an index. And all of those parts are the fiction. They are part of the story, though most of that story is told through the commentary, which um, takes up about two thirds. Of the book. I'm realizing that <laughs> metafiction just isn't for me quite. Um, it has to be really, really. Okay, well then, this sounds pretentious. This is freaking Vladimir Nabokov. He knew how to write, so it's not that it's badly done. It's just, I guess, the story has to be phenomenally interesting for me to really enjoy it. But anyway, uh, so the story of this book you have a poet named John Shade who writes this poem in four cantos you find in the book. It's the very last poem he ever writes because he gets murdered. And the book is put together by a friend of John Shade called Charles Kingboat, and he's a weird character obsessed with John Shade and the poem he wrote because, very minor spoiler, he basically thinks that the poem was written about a subject which he really cares about. Very self-centered, <laughs> to say the least. So he puts together publication, including his introduction to the poem and his commentary to the poem. But in the commentary, you quickly realize that he just talks about himself and his life story and his relationship with the poet John Shade. And thus you discover the backstory of Charles Kinboat, who murdered John Shade, etc. In and of itself, it's not the kind of story that I tend to gravitate towards. But one thing that did help my reading experience a lot was the writing. Like I said, it's Vladimir Nabokov. And the man knew how to write. Oh my god. It's just, it's beautiful writing. It's witty writing. It's cultured writing, too. I mean, some of the literary references I just didn't get because I'm not that well versed in English and international literature. I mean, I, I think I do have a good base of general knowledge about that topic, but just not good enough for this, basically. It's beautifully written, but I mean, I've talked about Nakov's writing in my uh, review of Lolita, if you want to check that out. So I'm not really going to elaborate further upon that. It's just very well written. It's funny. It's witty. It's it's just clever. He makes puns and he plays around with words and language and references. Like I said, some of them I just didn't get, but out of the times I thought, yeah, this, see what you did there. <laughs> funny. Character-wise, I mean, this is also a book about character. So he does shine in that respect. But again, this is just something that clearly Nabokov really enjoyed the crap out of. The unreliable narrator, because you thought Humbert Humbert was one. Charles Kinboat is one, clearly, as well. And he just comes up with these variegated characters that are, at the same time, assholes or outright monsters in the case of Humbert Humbert. 
but are also clever and witty and have interesting things to say, I guess. But yeah, Charles Kinboat is kind of an arsenal as well, very self-centered. He's a colorful character, I'll say that. But, I mean, his life story wasn't that interesting to me, which is, which is also why I didn't enjoy this book that much. And you only have his point of view, but you do get to know the character of the poet John Shade a bit. And as with Lolita, interestingly enough, you can kind of see through the cracks of Charles Kinboat's unreliable narration and see like, you say well, you were such good friends with this poet John Shade, but I'm like, did he really think you were a good friend of his? I seriously doubt it, mate. You're so full of yourself. No world building, obviously, this is literary fiction. Oh, oh actually, I say that, but there's a, there's a fictional country in there. Because why not, I guess? It's a fictional country with a fictional culture, but I mean, it's not developed that much either. It's just, I don't know, I guess you Darkov just wanted to play around with that. He plays with that idea too, but a lot more thoroughly in Ada or Arda, by the way, because it doesn't actually take place on our version of Earth. So, yeah, theme-wise, see, this is where I kind of uh, hit a wall. And I wasn't originally going to do a review for this book, but I was like, I don't have that many reviews in my uh, <laughs> non-speculative fiction section, so uh, I'm going to do one just for that little bit. But theme-wise, like, I was like, what are the themes here? What am I missing? So I did go on the internet and do a bit of research and see what people thought about this book. Basically, it's kind of a riff on literary criticism itself, as far as I can understand it. He pokes fun at literary critics. And literary academia, I guess, because this takes place around a university. Charles Kinbert works at a university, so does John Shade, and around them they have different academics and different departments, mostly to do with language and literature. So, yeah, with literary critics and literary academia can be very stuffy and full of itself and outright stupid, maybe. It doesn't get aggressive with his subtexts, at least I didn't think he did, but the way his characters talk about their colleagues they, they really make fun of them and very snooty and look down upon their colleagues. And especially Charles Kimbo is very demeaning to a lot of people. I mean, there are also reasons for that, which you discover as you read on through the commentary. But that's the theme. <laughs> that's the main theme. It's, is it a theme? That, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a theme. It's literary academia it can be very stupid and so far up its own ass that it comes up with ridiculous analyses, conclusions like that. <laughs> to me, it wasn't as rich or deep as something like Lolita or even Ada or Arda, so I kind of went over my head, honestly. I ended up giving this two stars out of five. I hesitated between two and three. I mean, technically in my rating system, it would be a five out of ten, which feels a bit weird because it is Nabokov. This really gets saved for me by the quality of the writing and the very interesting and characteristic characterization of the, well, in this case, the narrator, Charles Kinboat. I, I could just tell you, yeah, this is Nabokov, and I like this. But apart from that, the story was a bit boring, actually. I was a bit bored. Now, thankfully, this is fairly short, and a lot of it is, a, well, not most of it, but a little chunk of it is just a poem you read through. And even the commentary is segmented, so it reads actually fairly quickly. But it was, yeah, it was a bit boring. <laughs> I just I wasn't that entertained or enthralled by the story. Uh, not what I was expecting either, but interesting nonetheless. I think I would like to try something else by Nabokov. Like I said, the story does need to interest me, and I don't tend to gravitate towards literary fiction unless it's about very specific types of stories. But uh, if any of you who watch me enjoy the works of Nabokov, I'd be very open to a suggestion here. Out of his, I know he's written novels in Russian which have been translated, but I'll I'll stick to the novels he actually wrote in English for now. Out of those that I haven't yet read, what should I pick up next by him? Because I'm willing to try something else, if only for the quality of the writing and the characterization, but I'm sure there are stories he wrote which I just might find more interesting than this. That was my mini review of uh, Hellfire by Vladimir Nabokov. A bit of a flop for me, though again, it's very well written. Character is interesting, and I'm sure if perhaps with someone who's even more well versed in literature and academia, you might get a lot more out of this than I did. Now I saw on Goodreads people saying you need to read this several times to appreciate it. Okay, fine, but guess what? I'm not a lit student, and there are lots of other things I want to read, so uh, no. <laughs> 
it's not good enough. You'll have a lovely day evening or whichever time of day you prefer. And I shall see you in the next video. And I hope you're all doing well. Bye.